Hey guys, and welcome back to the Critter Crochet YouTube channel. Today we're doing a, another pattern review, and today's pattern review is of Mr. Apollo the Octopus. He is a really big, chunky, floppy, soft cuddle buddy, and I love him. Um, so yes, we're just going to go straight into the pattern review, and I have the pattern right here to go along with you guys and talk about my experience with it what I liked, what I had problems with, just things like that. Because I finished this pattern a few days ago, like four days ago or something. So it's pretty fresh in my mind. And yes, I bought this pattern on Etsy for $10 about three years ago. Um, and I just, I hadn't gotten around to it. It was just a pattern that was sitting in my bin that I have full of patterns that I haven't done yet. And... My boyfriend really wanted it for his anniversary gift, so here we are. It's finally done. <laughs> and I like the pattern so much, I'm even thinking of making myself one because I have leftover yarn. But yes. This pattern is by Project Tarian. She is one of my absolute favorite crochet designers. Her work is phenomenal. If you've never heard of her, or if you've heard of her but haven't really looked into her, check it out. It, her work is just awesome. <laughs> and I plan at one point doing every single one of her patterns. I love them. And another thing I really like about her patterns is that they're kind of written like books. They're just full of beautiful instructional pictures and every single piece of information that you need to know about the pattern. Like everything down to very specific details, which is awesome. Because this is a 40 page pattern and I didn't get lost once, which is crazy to me because I've had a few, like I've had patterns that are only a few pages long and I'll get stuck or lost or something, but I was not lost a single time. I had felt like I had done the pattern before going through the pattern. It was crazy. So her patterns are definitely worth the money. I'll say it right now. $10 is probably the most I've ever spent on a pattern, but I've definitely found it to be worth it. So let's get right into it. Um... Her patterns usually start with an introduction page, um, kind of telling you about Apollo himself, uh, what you're about to get into, things like that. And then she has a pattern information page. This pattern is written in US terminology. Um, it'll tell you the finished size. The difficulty is labeled intermediate. Um, I would agree with this only because I consider myself to be more intermediate, advanced crochet level. Um, and there are even parts of this that I struggled with. Um, but I'm also someone who really encourages beginners to just go out there and try whatever they can because it's very good practice. I know it can be frustrating, but if you put the time, work, and effort into it, you'll be surprised by what you learn and what you get better at. You know, it's all practice. So please don't let the intermediate label intimidate you or anything. And then it goes into yarn weight, which I'll get into in a second. So necessary skills for this um, is working in a round, which is very common in a merg or a yumi, or in a spiral. Um, accurately counting stitches in rows. This is a very important part of this pattern, or else you can get lost very easily. Um, using stitch markers and running markers. Stitch markers play a big part in this pattern, so you need to be comfortable with using them. Basic sewing, invisible decrease, and color changing. Um, and each of her patterns include a separate booklet called Emerger Yumi Tips, which are actually full of all of these necessary skills that you need to know. So if you don't know any of them, if you purchase the pattern, she'll give you a booklet that tells you how to do them. And the booklet is just as full of information and pictures as her patterns. So very helpful, especially as a beginner. Um, moving on. So she goes into special stitches, abbreviations, all of that. And then yarn quantities. So for the body, sucker, belly, you need DK yarn, which is stands for double knit. It's a lightweight number three yarn. And I actually have what I used for all of that right here. So for the body, I used Karen Skinny Cakes. And this is, this is a light three. I used 
loops and thread baby yarn for and pink for the suckers and white for the belly. Now, one thing I want to talk about is I was very impressed by how little yarn this pattern actually used because this I still this is what this is the ball that I used on the belly. This is what or the body. This is what I still have left over. I bought two because I thought I was gonna need two. Um, but I was very impressed by how much yarn I had left over. Like this is what I had left over. So not a lot of yarn was actually used. Only three balls of yarn. <laughs> and then for the eyes. You are going to need four ply yarn, which is a thinner fingering uh, yarn. Yes, I don't know exactly what size weight four ply yarn is, but I'm sure that's something you can easily look up. Yes. Okay, so moving on. She also, what I like is that she lists a yarn kit colors. So it tells her or it tells you the exact yarn type that she used in the exact colors, which is always nice. I never really pay attention to it, but it's there if you want to. So she also has like a bunch of information about choosing yarn and colors. Like she's not telling you you need to use the yarn that she did, but she's telling you tips and like things that work with different kinds of yarn and stuff like that. So the other supplies that you will need for this pattern is a 5mm hook for the body and the belly, a 4mm hook for the tentacles and eyelids, 2mm hook for the eyes and suckers, a 1.5mm hook for the light reflection in the eyes, scissors, yarn, sewing needle. Um, she specifies a soft springy stuffing, um, pins with large head, and stitch markers. Lots and lots of stitch markers. Um, she says over 26. So, and I can clarify that. <laughs> lots of stitch markers. And then she goes into another page about certain techniques and copyright and everything like that. And then on to the pattern itself. So the first part of the pattern that you do are the eight tentacles. Um, you start by crocheting this white part right here and then the suckers are optional I chose to do them to get the full experience of the pattern and let me tell you the suckers were the most tedious and grueling part of this pattern but they're totally worth it um, it was just for some reason doing the suckers was a lot for me so I was averaging doing one tentacle per day so this pattern took me a little but, so yes, you crochet this white part and you section it into section into five sections and you do five different sections of suckers. So within each section, they increase in size. So the smallest suckers are on the bottom and the biggest ones are on the top. So if you do this pattern, suckers are optional, but I would encourage you to just try it, you know. I think it's cool how she did them. And the reason that you have to do them as you work is because as soon as you're done with the white part, you work on finishing the back part. So it's a process, but it was fun. Yes. Yeah, so there are five different types of suckers, like I said, and they increase in size as you go. And you make eight suckers before, or not eight suckers, sorry, eight tentacles before you move on to the body. So the body is probably one of the things that I had a lot of trouble with, um, only because the first part is by connecting the tentacles all together by like one row. So it's really awkward holding all eight tentacles um, with them only being single crochet on a certain part together. It was really floppy, it was flimsy, and it was kind of hard for me to get a grip to like actually crochet properly. So I know that the my stitches on the head, they got a little, they were really tight and they were stretched. 
so I think that's the reason why the head on my octopus came out a little small, but I tried redoing it and it was just not working out for me, so it is what it is. But I think the body is probably the one part that I struggled with the most, which is weird because <laughs> it's not usually the hard part. But this is kind of where all of the stitch markers come in. So you have to mark um, certain sections on each tentacle. So you put about four stitch markers per tentacle. So it turns out to be a lot. Um, so lots and lots of stitch markers, but I don't mind stitch markers. I find them very helpful and useful. So yes, you do body. And then after the body, you continue to connecting the tentacles downward. Um, so you stitch them this way so that they're actually held together. And once it got to this point, it was much easier because it then became like one solid piece instead of the head and then the eight separate tentacles kind of. And then after that, you move on to stuffing the head. So the pattern actually specifies using a bowl for stuffing, and I found this very helpful. Um, so I ended up stuffing the body 10 times because there's a flat part of the head, which is the front, and then the back part of the head is more rounded to look like an octopus. And for some reason, it just wasn't looking the way I wanted it to, so I ended up having to stuff it three times before I got a shape that I sort of liked. Um, the first time I used the bowl, the second time I didn't, and the third time I did. So the times that I used the bowl, I found it more successful because for some reason when you put it in the bowl, it kind of just naturally shaped itself when you were starting to stuff it, which was really nice. And I think Project Herring is onto something with that. So after you stuff it, you move on to doing the belly. Um, the belly is worked in the same way as the head. It's just it's just the flat piece on the bottom to bring it all together. Let's get you back up there. And then after the belly, you move on to the eyes. So I also struggled a little bit with the eyes. I don't know why. <laughs> um, they they came out looking just like the pattern, but I had a little bit of an issue. I think it's because I used different yarn than I was supposed to. Um, I When I got this part of the pattern, I realized that I didn't have the proper yarn. So I used what I had in my yarn bin, which was the correct weight, but I don't think it was the correct yarn, if that makes sense. So I struggled with it because you crochet the black of the eye first and then you continue with the yellow and then you make the eye reflections to sew on later. Um, there was actually very little to no sewing in this pattern which is very nice because I'm not great at sewing. I've been trying to get better but Projectarian, she explains everything about the sewing. She explains where to properly place the pins when you're placing the items on to your thing to sew. Because um, I know that when I started off crocheting, I did not use pins or anything. I just sewed it where I thought it needed to be sewed. And I was wondering why it wasn't looking right. And then I actually did a pattern of Blue Rabbit toys and she used pins. I was like, oh. Maybe I'll use pins this time, and it just makes life a hundred times easier. So after you do the eyes, you sew on the light reflections, um, and then you sew the eyes to the head. You place this eye over the first front tentacle, and this one over the fourth front tentacle, so they're kind of even. And yeah, and then you uh, you sew on the eyelids, I think that's what they're called. And then that's it. So yeah, this pattern was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Um, it took forever. It took me a few weeks, but in the beginning of the pattern, one thing that she said that stuck with me is that this is like working on an afghan. And I think that's the best way to describe it. It's like an emergery Umi version of an afghan, which I thought was really cool because 
I never really got into the blanket side of crochet. Like, I've made a few blankets, but I definitely have my niche in Margaret Yumi. I love it. It's probably my favorite style of crochet. So, to have this big of an Margaret Yumi crochet project, it was so much fun. It was. There were times that I got frustrated. There were times that it seemed like it was going on and on and on. But let me tell you, when I finally finished it, the rewarding feeling that I got was amazing. <laughs> So, Projectarian, please go check her out. I'll have um, her website, her Etsy page, and this pattern linked below. Um, her work is just fantastic. And I highly recommend this pattern. I know it's $10 and it seems like a lot, but it's totally worth it. So, yes. On to the final part of my video where I talk to you guys about what's going on in my world of crochet. So... Talking about Projectarian, I actually just bought another pattern of hers um, called Rocket the Beagle. And I'm actually almost done with him, and I'm really excited to do a pattern review of him because he's probably one of my favorite things at the moment, and I'm not even done with him. I haven't even started sewing him together. So I'll let you guys know when that's done. I'll do a pattern review of him and everything. Like I said, at some point, I would like to get around to doing all of Projectarian's patterns because I love them, and I think they're fantastic. I'm also working on another critter pattern to put up for free on my blog, if you guys don't know about those. They're just a collection of crochet patterns that I have up for free on my blog at CritterCrochet.com that you guys can go check out. I'm currently working on a new one, and I hope to have them done soon. And graduation's coming up, so I'm planning on also doing a pattern for a graduation bear or something. I might also do a graduation critter if I get around to it. So yeah, a lot's going on. I also have a whale shark that I need to finish before I leave. So all the stuff, but I'm excited. I have a lot going on, a lot going for me. And yes. So if you guys liked this video or found it helpful in any way, consider giving it a like. If you like me or my channel, consider subscribing. Um, if you'd like to support me in any way, I will have my blog linked below, crittercrochet.com. I also have my socials linked below. And currently in my Etsy shop for the next month, I have a Mother's Day sale where some of my listings are 50% off. And for the next month, I'm kind of doing this as a trial thing. If you buy an item in my shop for full price, you will get a coupon for $5 off your next purchase. So, that's going on. <laughs> so, I hope you guys are having a good day. Have a good rest of your day, week, month. Um, good luck on any crochet projects that you might currently be working on or future crochet projects, too. And so, I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.